and a warm welcome to our today's keynote speaker dr prince winston garu hod triple e from kamaraj college of engineering madurai good afternoon sir good afternoon ma'am good afternoon ma'am it's my honor and privilege to introduce you on today's session 2 of fifth day fdp on application of power electronic converters to power and energy systems i'm sharanya assistant professor from vardhaman college of engineering in triple e department so i'd like to introduce uh, sir dr d prince winston garu who has received the be degree from rvs college of engineering and technology in 2006 and the master degree from anna university in 2008 and the doctorate degree from the anna university in 2013 and sir is having 14 years of teaching experience and more than 30 research articles in national and international journals and sir has also done his six patents include fabrication of multi junction box pv modules for power enhancement during faulty conditions and also in power enhancement in solar pv systems by coconut coir and waste polyethylene bags and a novel method for early detection of power quality disturbances using arduino and one more project on reduce leg voltage mismatch method for temporary or permanent faulted pv systems and couple matching and current injection based pv circuit for partially shared pv systems dr d prince winston garu has completed five consultancy projects which is included with energy and harmony audit from dharmaratna textiles private limited kattangudi on march 2017 and his project also in from kaisi plasto pack Virudhunagar on November 2017, and the energy and harmony audit from Ria Oil Products Arupkoti on April 2018, and the development of matrix switching circuit for PV applications from VS Constructions Madurai on August 2018. One more consultancy project is ongoing with project title of Improvement of Power Generation in a 20 Kilowatt Solar PV Power Plant. Through bypass diode scanning algorithm and modified couple matching algorithm, this is under AICT RPS agency, worth 1.5 lakh. Sir has also published a book title of Electrical Engineering and Instrumentation with ARS Publications in 2017. He has supervised six PhD scholars and was awarded with Young Researcher Powered Electronics and Drives under the Integrated Intelligent Research Organization, Chennai, 2018. Sir is also honored with a scientist fellowship from TNSCST from TNSCST Government of Tamil Nadu in the 2019, and one more award for sole author publication in IEEE Transaction from IEEE Madras Section in 2019 and 2020. Sir, it's my honor and privilege to introduce you. And today the session of research issue issues in solar energy system would be more interesting, and uh, we would like to hear. it from you sir and uh, welcome one once again sir it's over to you okay madam uh, thanks for your uh, warm welcome uh, uh, very good afternoon to all of you uh, first of all i used to thank uh, uh, the management of uh, vardhaman college of engineering and also my uh, uh, student uh, phd student uh, dr pravin who is uh, working in uh, triple department uh, Uh, thanks for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, first i uh, share my slides and other uh, my slides are visible yes sir okay. we can see your uh, slides sir okay 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 so I am uh, Dr. Deep Vincentson, Dean Research Associate, uh, Achodi uh, of uh, AAA Department of Kamaraj College of Engineering and Technology. Uh, today we are uh, going to discuss about uh, solar uh, photovoltaics uh, and uh, uh, research which we uh, done in uh, solar photovoltaics. So before uh, telling my uh, uh, research, I wish to convey the basic. Uh, things about uh, solar photovoltaics that will be useful for uh, all the participants in uh, better better understanding the concept of uh, uh, what we have uh, done in our research so if you uh, see this picture uh, 
this is the PV cell uh, structure. Uh, PV is uh, made up of uh, P-type and N-type material. It's nothing uh, but like our uh, normal uh, uh, diode uh, construction is uh, different. And also the thickness, how much, uh, what about the doping which we are uh, diffusing in that uh, uh, semiconductor, that is the difference. Uh, other than that, uh, both are uh, same. Uh, if you see the voltage of uh, solar PV, uh, it uh, it's like a, a barrier voltage in a diode. So it always uh, varies from uh, uh, 0.58 to 0.68. So it normally in the range of uh, this uh, uh, voltage levels. Um, by uh, seeing the panels uh, construction, you could be able to uh, uh, calculate the voltage output of a PV module. Uh, before uh, going to a module array and uh, some other MPPT uh, techniques, uh, better uh, we can understand uh, uh, the PV uh, first. Uh, so in PV cells, if a photon hit that uh, PV cell means electron uh, get ejected and electron accumulation uh, happened in the uh, front contact grid. Uh, I will uh, pointer option. Okay. So this portion, if you see, is the uh, front contact grid section. Uh, this is uh, back contact grid section. This is used to uh, collect the electrons and the holes. The front contact grid is for electron and back contact grid is for uh, holes. So this is the uh, layer physical layer which connects the n-type and p-type. You all know about uh, uh, depletion layer. We are making uh, any uh, p-type and n-type material uh, physically contact together means uh, the depletion layer will form. The potential across the depletion layer is called a barrier potential. Uh, for uh, silica, the barrier potential is 0.7 volt and for germanium it is uh, 0.3. We all uh, studied in our uh, physics. So as per that, for every uh, PV cell, the voltage will be in the range of uh, uh, 0.58 to 0.68 or even 0.7. Okay. Uh, how it uh, operate means the light, in light, uh, we all know that the photons is uh, available. That photons, once hits this uh, PV material, that is both the N-type and P-type material, the electron gets ejected and the electron accumulation is uh, happened at the front contact grid. So once the electron ejected, that the vacant place is called holes. So if you are uh, connecting a load from uh, front contact grid to back contact grid, what happens means that the ejected electron always uh, finds a path to recombine with the hole. If you are uh, connecting a load across uh, front and uh, back contact grid, all the electrons accumulated uh, here is uh, flown through the load that uh, generates electricity here. So it is entirely different from uh, our conventional uh, electricity generation, uh, what we, uh, uh, we are using in uh, thermal power station. There we are using uh, electromagnetic uh, force. That is, uh, but there the power generation is happened by uh, induction principle. Here, the generation is entirely different. Um, since we are generating uh, electrons with the help of uh, photons present in the light, this source is called uh, current source, not a voltage source. So we have to uh, represent uh, this source as current source, not voltage source. So the behavior of voltage and current source is entirely different. In our most of our uh, 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 undergraduate studies, we didn't uh, do a lot of analysis in uh, current source. Normally, we did a lot of uh, exercises in uh, uh, voltage source, but uh, here the behavior of uh, uh, that solar PV, that is current source, is entirely different. So, we uh, see this uh, behavior in detail in our uh, research discussion. So I hope uh, you uh, better uh, understand how solar PV works. So without photons here, uh, uh, electricity can't generate. 
so for uh, electricity generation uh, photon presence should be there uh, so for that we need uh, sunlight okay so this is the uh, picture uh, which shows the difference between cell module and array so what is the difference between uh, this uh, pv cell and uh, uh, what we are uh, seeing uh, in a commercial market like uh, this structure so you all uh, see this uh, pv cell in the pv module during your visit or you may have in your uh, college commercially we called this as a cell but uh, actually uh, each pv cell voltage in the range of uh, 0.58 to 0.67 and the current in the range of milliampere but for this cell it is in ampere level so what they did is uh, they just parallel n number of uh, switches or uh, uh, required amount of uh, uh, number of cells in order to meet out the uh, uh, current requirement okay for example uh, 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 anyone uh, making a cell for uh, one ampere so the cell rating will be uh, one ampere and uh, point approximately point uh, uh, 65 volt okay how they are uh, making uh, one ampere means they just parallel in num uh, required number of uh, uh, cells in parallel we all know uh, in parallel circuit current gets added up and the voltage remains same so that's why for uh, these kind of cells the voltage is normally uh, in the range of uh, 0.65 okay so this module is nothing but uh, interconnection of uh, cells okay module interconnection means it may be uh, series it may be parallel it may be series parallel more than that uh, number of uh, interconnection techniques also available so that interconnection of uh, pv cells in series or uh, parallel fashion is called uh, module that we commercially uh, uh, telling us uh, pv panel okay this panel rating is also decided by uh, number of uh, series and uh, parallel combination of cells next we see about array array is the interconnection of uh, modules that is uh, pv panels so in this array the panels are uh, interconnected in series parallel series parallel and many techniques are uh, uh, discussed in uh, researches like uh, total cross tide hutch bridge and uh, bridge link lot of configurations are coming uh, to overcome the uh, partial shading effect so first everyone should know the difference between uh, uh, cell module and array here that array output is uh, determined by inverter input so for inverter uh, there is a limitation for uh, input for example the input should be less than 1000 volt we can't exceed uh, 100 ampere like that they have given some uh, uh, limitations in inverters according to that we have to make uh, our uh, array arrangements uh, Uh, to limit the voltage and uh, current within the uh, uh, given level so that is the uh, thing we should uh, know about the uh, array next we see uh, some uh, basic uh, interconnection of uh, pv modules or even uh, we can uh, say uh, pv cell uh, for a better understanding we can uh, take it as uh, uh, pv module okay consider uh, that uh, you are having a uh, uh, 10 volt uh, Uh, and one ampere pv module assume that this uh, each portion this uh, each portion is uh, pv module this uh, here actually this is a structure of uh, cell assume that this is a pv module for a simple calculation uh, this uh, pv module voltage is uh, 10 volt and one ampere means what what would be the output of uh, uh, this uh, series combination can anyone tell seven modules are there so each module voltage is 10 volt and current rating is 1 ampere so if you are uh, connecting all the modules in series what are, what will be the output of uh, the sare 70 volts are output seven panels totally seven panels in a series circuit voltage gets added tell me tell me ma'am 
Seventy volts, one ampere. Very good. Ah, uh, so seventy volt, one ampere as far uh, uh, series circuit and uh, wattage is seventy uh, watts. Okay, very good. Next for uh, parallel circuit, the same uh, configuration but connected in parallel means. The voltage remains same and the current gets added up. So the voltage is uh, uh, 10 volt and current values 10 ampere. Sorry, uh, 7 ampere because we are having uh, 7 modules here. Uh, the total voltage is uh, 70 watts. Whereas in uh, series parallel, this uh, series combination is again uh, one leg is uh, parallel. So the voltage is here. 70 volt, but uh, the output current is 2 ampere. Total power is 140 watts for this uh, series parallel combination. So that is the uh, uh, interconnection uh, calculation. Okay, next uh, we see about the uh, standard test condition. Uh, in uh, PV modules, uh, we saw some uh, uh, specifications uh, pasted at the back side of the panel. That uh, details are normally given for uh, this uh, standard uh, test condition. Okay. Uh, the standard test condition values 25 degrees Celsius and uh, 1000 watts per meter square. So, um, for example, if uh, they are mentioning uh, uh, 100 watts panel means that panel deliver 100 watts only if uh, the temperature of the panel is 25 degrees Celsius and uh, uh, irradiation uh, received by the panel is uh, 1000 watts per meter square. If there is any change in that voltage and power gets deviated and due to that uh, uh, as for uh, temperature increase, power gets decreased. For irradiation uh, decrease, power gets decreased. Okay. So if you purchase a 100 watts panel and you are uh, uh, mounting in your uh, house means, uh, you can't always get uh, 100 watts. Uh, during uh, uh, sunny day as well as uh, in the time if you tell uh, 1 p.m. means uh, your uh, maximum capacity reach will be only 0.8 to 0.9. We can't uh, mostly reach uh, the per unit value 1. Why? Because uh, the panel operating temperature for our uh, climatic condition uh, will be in the range of uh, 55 to uh, 65 degree. Even if our panel receives uh, 1000 watts per meter square, uh, our uh, panel output power could not uh, reach the maximum value because of uh, that increase in uh, temperature. See, uh, the operating temperature of panel is uh, 55 means nearly 30 degree increase in uh, uh, the temp panel temperature value when compared to the uh, standard test condition. We will uh, discuss this uh, in detail in the later section. So you should know about the uh, standard test condition. This is the value. So for uh, these specifications only, they have uh, mentioned the uh, power rating and other specifications like uh, uh, Vmax, Imax, VOC, IESC. PM and uh, fill factor. So normally these uh, five parameters are very, very uh, important. I uh, just uh, want to point it out. Uh, this uh, five parameters are very, very important in all the panels. Uh, they just mentioned uh, these five specifications. Okay. Uh, VM is uh, nothing but uh, maximum voltage and VOC is nothing but open circuit voltage. VOC is always higher than Vmax. If you are connecting load means voltage get dips. So in open circuit, voltage will be higher. When you are loading and you are adjusting your load to extract the maximum power, the power, uh, sorry, the voltage at which maximum power occur is called maximum voltage. The maximum uh, current then, see, Imax is 10 ampere. This is a short circuit current, 11 ampere. The short circuit current values are always higher than the maximum current uh, because uh, this is a uh, short circuit means you all know uh, the connected resistance across the panel is uh, zero. So ultimately all the electrons uh, generated in the uh, PV cell is uh, without any restriction they just recombine with the pole. So ultimately the 
current value will be higher for the short circuit assume that if you are uh, disconnecting the load and uh, short the front and uh, back contact grid what happen the electron all the accumulated electron will flow directly and recombine with the poles without any uh, restriction if you are connecting a load the load resistance uh, will occur that is the load impedance will play a role and uh, so due to that uh, some uh, uh, limitation in electron okay that's why that uh, maximum current value is somewhat lesser than the short circuit current value so what about uh, p max that is the um, product of v max and i max okay then uh, another important parameter is uh, fill factor fill factor is the uh, ratio of uh, vm im divided by voc iac this fill factor normally reflect the uh, quality of the panel more the fill factor more the quality if the fill factor is very low the quality of the panel is very low the optimal value for the uh, uh, fill factor will be in the range of uh, 0.722 uh, 0.85 that is the optimal value uh, uh, if uh, panel fill factor is less than uh, 0.7 or uh, 0.65 in the range means uh, uh, the quality of the panel is uh, very low so do you by uh, calculating the fill factor value you could able to find the quality of the panel also okay uh, then uh, pv characteristics uh, i hope uh, you have uh, seen this uh, during uh, uh, renewable uh, energy studies uh, this is the graph uh, drawn between uh, voltage and uh, power x axis is voltage and y axis is power and also for uh, various irradiation uh, here this uh, pv curve is drawn uh, if you see the pink color uh, 1000 watts per meter square and then uh, blue 800 watts per meter square you just see the maximum power point its uh, irradiation uh, decreases its proportionally the power gets decrease okay that is the inference so uh, for uh, if you compare uh, irradiation with power it is uh, directly proportional okay if irradiation increases power increases if irradiation decreases power decreases whereas in the case of temperature if uh, temperature increases power output will be decreased if the temperature decreases means power output will be higher so that is the relationship between the uh, parameters okay uh, and also i wish to uh, highlight uh, one thing here uh, if you see the maximum power point voltage so what uh, we uh, uh, saw in the uh, 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 completed section uh, about vm uh, the voltage at which maximum power point occur is called maximum voltage here I just want to highlight that. See, this is the point. Okay, so this is the point where the voltage corresponds to the maximum power. This is the maximum power point. So the voltage corresponds to the maximum power point is here, approximately seventeen uh, volt. Seventeen volt. okay that is for 1000 watts per meter square whereas if you see this point this green color that is 400 watts per meter square see the maximum power occurs at this point the voltage corresponds to this point is approximately 15.5 or 15.8 volt so the voltage uh, points are shifted for the irradiation decreases so the vm value gets varied depends on the irradiation and temperature that we should know that's why we need mppt controller to track this voltage in order to extract maximum power assume that you are mppt controller operating voltage is uh, uh, 16 that, that is uh, 16 volt for 1000 watts per meter square if uh, irradiation uh, decreases you are maintaining the same voltage 
if you are maintaining the same voltage for 400 watts per meter square means you could lose uh, some power okay that is the important thing so you have to vary the voltage according to the okay otherwise you could lose uh, power that's why we need uh, mbpt in all the solar pv system in uh, other method also i try to uh, make you understand uh, you will uh, see that in uh, the upcoming slides uh, this is the uh, iv curve and pv curve combinedly shown in this picture uh, see uh, y axis is current uh, for uh, nearly 25 to 26 volt the current decrement uh, is not uh, that much slightly decreased whereas after 25 volt and uh, it, when it reaches uh, nearly uh, 28 29 volt drastically decreased within 32 point something it almost reach zero so the current value gets zero okay so if you are operating voltage is uh, in the range of 5 volt you are for 10 volt it gives same 8.5 ideal for uh, 15 also it gives same 8.5 for 20 also same 8.5 for 25 also almost 8.5 okay so what would be the uh, optimal uh, point optimal voltage point definitely this uh, maximum power point will be the optimal up to that the current variation uh, does not uh, Uh, create that much uh, impact in the uh, power so we need to uh, see both voltage and current so after this point only power gets uh, started decreasing so you have to uh, uh, vary your load uh, reach your uh, load terminal voltage that is uh, pv ra voltage in the range of uh, uh, this level okay otherwise uh, you have to lose uh, power If, you, if the pv ra voltage in the range of 20 means uh, uh, you have to lose uh, more power okay that is the inference in this uh, iv and uh, pv characteristics uh, let, let us uh, see uh, this thing uh, with an example uh, uh, your assumption is uh, needed here assume that uh, you are uh, using a uh, uh, 10 volt and 1 uh, ampere uh, uh, panel okay uh, 10 volt and 1 uh, ampere means 1 ampere current source okay 1 ampere current source okay here i have mentioned uh, source okay uh, in your hand you are having a variable rheostat okay the source is 1 ampere and you are having a variable rheostat the first scenario is your uh, uh, load value is 10 ohm and uh, your uh, current uh, source values 1 ampere that is not going to change okay the current irradiation is uh, current irradiation makes uh, panel output as 1 ampere okay for example if you uh, take a uh, uh, stc because we uh, mentioned a panel reading uh, 10 volt and 1 ampere so at stc we are going to do some analysis so the power sorry, sorry the current uh, output current values 1 ampere your connected load is 10 ohm what about uh, the voltage the voltage becomes 10 volt and uh, power becomes 10 volt and 1 ampere ultimately 10 watts for the same case if you are uh, connecting 10 ohm instead of uh, uh, 10 volt if you are connecting sorry instead of 10 ohm if you are connecting uh, 10 ohm what happen for the same scenario instead of connecting 10 ohm you have just connected 5 ohm what what happen ultimately the voltage becomes 5 volt because current value not going to change that you have uh, shown from the uh, you have uh, seen in the previous graph for every voltage you see up to 25 the current uh, didn't change okay this is the current source irrespective of uh, your uh, load the source uh, uh, gives a same current value 
or to some uh, certain limit after that it drastically reduce and uh, reaches uh, zero value okay for uh, 5 ohm the value becomes 5 volt and uh, power will be 5 watts so for the same case if you are uh, connecting uh, 5 ohm means ultimately your uh, power gets reduced to 5 watts so whereas if you are connecting 1 ohm what happen ultimately the power reduced to 1 watts because the voltage value is 1 volt because the current flown through the load is 1 ampere and the load value is 1 ohm ultimately 1 volt and 1 ampere the power is 1 watts so what is the inference so in all the solar pv system definitely we need a dc to dc converter between source and load what is the purpose of uh, this uh, uh, converter is to adjust the load in order to meet out the uh, generation okay uh, we uh, can uh, see this in uh, another uh, scenario assume uh, you are having uh, 100 watts 100 watts uh, solar panel Uh, you are going to uh, conduct a one experiment for that uh, you uh, uh, bring that panel to your uh, terrace and you are doing experiment okay at that time uh, uh, the irradiation uh, level is uh, at stc that is 25 degrees celsius and uh, uh, 1000 watts per meter square ultimately your uh, panel uh, will deliver 100 watts so you just connected a load of 100 watts there so from uh, solar panel you can uh, extract 100 watts if uh, due to cloud movement if uh, panel power generation is uh, suddenly decreased means what happen uh, assume that values uh, instead of 1000 watts per meter square your irradiation value uh, reaches to 500 watts per meter square value means what happen you just uh, uh, anyone uh, can tell I, saw, I told you uh, irradiation and uh, power is directly proportional. If uh, irradiation is 50 percentage decrease, means uh, power also 50 percentage uh, decrease. Okay, from 100 watts, the panel output power will uh, come to a level of 50 watts. What about uh, load? If you are connecting a same load, means that uh, 100 watts load means your load could not perform, and also you couldn't extract the maximum uh, power from that uh, uh, PV source. Okay. Okay, now assume that you reduce the load to because uh, varying the load is in your hand. Okay, you are, you are just connected a, a rheostat. You just reduce the rheostat value and you make uh, that uh, load as fifty watts. So now you match the power generation and uh, uh, load, fifty watts generation and fifty uh, watts uh, load that uh, will uh, properly work and also you can. Uh, extract maximum from power from source as well as uh, you better uh, better operate the load also suddenly if a cloud uh, passes away and irradiation increases from uh, 500 to 1000 watts per meter square means ultimately your uh, panel power generation uh, increases to 100 from 50 watts so but uh, in the same scenario if your connected load is 50 watts means what happen your generation capacity is 100 and your uh, load is 50 watts only so here you have to adjust your load and you have to vary uh, your load to 100 watts so uh, depends on the irradiations you have to continuously vary the load also that's why we need a, a dc to dc converter in between the source and load in solar pv system okay uh, ultimately it matches the load impedance with the source impedance in order to uh, extract maximum power okay that is the uh, uh, need for dc to dc converter here otherwise you can extract power but uh, that is not the uh, maximum power uh, of the panel this is the other uh, pv cow now we see uh, uh, mppt techniques mm. and this is the uh, Uh, perturb and absorb method two mppt techniques are uh, normally used one is uh, p and o and another one is uh, incremental conductance method uh, in uh, perturb and absorb method 
for every instant uh, they in, for every instant they just measure the power and uh, uh, compare that instant power with the previous power whether it is decreased or uh, increased the change in power is measured if the power a change in power increases means uh, uh, they will uh, increment the voltage if it is opposite they will uh, decrease the voltage that is the concept in uh, pedra and observer so if you do so uh, automatically uh, for x1 uh, if you are uh, comparing x2 with x1 the power is increased so ultimately the whole uh, for the next point the voltage is increased like that uh, it's work like uh, hill climbing algorithm and uh, it reaches the maximum point and after reaching this point if you again increase the voltage means what happens the power gets decreased so ultimately uh, this algorithm will decrease the voltage so uh, by this algorithm you could easily reach the peak and from peak you could uh, find a oscillation here due to that oscillation uh, power also fluctuate that is the uh, main drawback in uh, perturb and absorb method uh, so to overcome this uh, power oscillation uh, another own method is normally used that is called incremental conductance method in incremental conductance method instead of uh, measuring the change in power here uh, they have uh, uh, measured the change in conductance value uh, that is uh, del i divided by del v now if you see uh, the del i uh, divided by uh, del v value is always uh, higher than uh, zero for this portion and whereas uh, is uh, greater than zero for this portion whereas in uh, this flat portion it is zero okay so this algorithm this incremental conductance algorithm for every instant increase the voltage and uh, it uh, check the conductance change in conductance value when uh, the conductance change in conductance value is zero means that point is fixed and uh, at that point that uh, operating voltage is uh, given to the uh, converter uh, that will uh, deliver the power without any oscillation here the maximum power point is fixed whereas in this, this it's normally oscillated in the peak so that is the uh, difference uh, some other uh, simple methods are available uh, for experimentation but for uh, uh commercial as well as uh, for uh, uh, any other application they normally didn't use uh, these kind of algorithm current based maximum power point and uh, voltage based maximum power point uh, this need a uh, uh, current factor now here uh, they have mentioned mc mc is calculated by uh, your uh, panel specification im at stc and uh, isc divided by isc at stc from that you can uh, calculate the current current factor thereby uh, you can uh, able to find the uh, uh, maximum power point current value for various uh, irradiation conditions okay uh, here that mc is fixed you have to measure the short circuit current for uh, various irradiation so for example you want to find the uh, maximum power point current for uh, 500 watts per meter square uh, you just short the uh, current value and uh, multiply uh, that value with the mc you could uh, find im impb that impb is uh, given as uh, a set value for the closed loop current control of the converter so your uh, converter ultimately makes the uh, panel output current as uh, is equal to the level of uh, impb in thereby you could be able to extract the maximum power uh, from this uh, simple method but uh, the problem is uh, uh, here uh, you need to isolate the load otherwise you couldn't find the short circuit current in uh, pv panel or pv array that is the main drawback so we uh, couldn't uh, do this uh, thing in large size power plant for experimentation we can easily uh, use this and uh, we can calculate the mbp this is uh, same for uh, uh, voltage based maximum power point uh, here we will uh, find uh, mv value mv is a uh, voltage factor uh, this is also calculated from the stc uh, this stc uh, that is the voltage factor is multiplied by the voc value the instant voc value that is for irradiation uh, various irradiation you can uh, find the operating uh, maximum power point operating voltage as like uh, uh, i uh, told you for uh, current here it's voltage that is the difference okay
Uh, this is the day, uh, day power uh, generation of uh, PV. Uh, normally for uh, uh, solar, uh, oh, wait a minute. Normally uh, for a solar uh, power plant, uh, the plant load factor varies from 12% to 20%. You see the graph. This is the graph uh, drawn for uh, time and uh, power. Uh, time, uh, you see from uh, 6 p 6 a.m. Uh, panel uh, starts uh, generation. Uh, for a period, you see uh, the maximum values is uh, 0.7 only. That also after 12 p.m. and uh, it generates up to uh, 630 or 645. This is the uh, curve, the day power generation curve. If you average all the value, uh, the percentage value will be 20 percentage. The maximum uh, capacity. For example, uh, if you assume that uh, your uh, plant load factor is uh, 20 percentage, if you are installing a uh, one kilowatt solar uh, power plant in your home means you can extract only 4.8 units per day. That is the uh, standard. So 4.8 units means uh, 4,800 watt hour. Okay. Uh, that is the inference. We sometimes, most of the times, we can't uh, reach the maximum capacity due to the temperature variation as well as uh, other uh, factors, okay. Uh, this is the uh, curve uh, for uh, various uh, temperature. You see, for STC, the panel generates 200 watts, whereas for 50 degrees Celsius, nearly 40 percentage loss in power, it comes around 160. So if the panel temperature increases uh, to, to 25 degrees Celsius, here uh, power loss uh, happens, 40 watts power loss happens. Whereas for the same panel, the operating temperature for the same irradiation, I am telling about the same irradiation, okay? For uh, 75 degrees Celsius from 200, it reaches 120 watts, nearly 80 watts drop in power due to 50 degree Celsius. Uh, this is the impact of uh, temperature in uh, PV panels. So a lot of uh, methods are uh, coming up uh, to decrease the temperature of uh, uh, PV panels. Uh, just a minute. Uh, Um, one minute. Okay. Oh, sorry, mm. um, uh, my sites are visible. It's visible, sir. Okay, fine. So these are the uh, different types of uh, PV uh, and its uh, efficiency levels. Uh, for uh, poly, that is a uh, polycrystalline, and the efficiency uh, will be around uh, thirteen to fifteen percentage. For monocrystalline. Efficiency will be in the range of uh, 15 to 18 percentage. For uh, thin film, the efficiency uh, is somewhat. What higher? 
normally uh, in the range of uh, 22 uh, even uh, 22 percentage uh, nowadays uh, bifacial panels are coming up uh, that panel efficiency in the range of uh, 23 to 24 so that panel that bifacial panel uh, will receive irradiation in the front side as well as uh, rear side that is the advantage in our uh, college uh, we have uh, 420 watts adani uh, bifacial panel a lot of uh, research are uh, going on uh, on that uh, bifacial also and uh, regarding uh, the cmpbd uh, two uh, mbbd uh, tracking uh, techniques are there one is uh, electrical tracking and another one is uh, mechanical tracking uh, electrical tracking is uh, what we uh, discussed earlier okay uh, we are uh, adjusting we are uh, adjusting uh, the load they are so what uh, normally uh, they tell electrical tracking is by using this converter we are uh, tracking the generation uh, power and uh, we just vary the load according to the uh, generation level so here if you are this uti this converter <coughs> make a load as 50 here it is uh, 100 this converter make uh, this load as 100 it is 70 here also 70 that is called electrical tracking uh, that is uh, done by the help of uh, maximum power point uh, trackers a lot of uh, techniques also we discuss okay electrical tracking in mechanical tracking uh, they uh, tilt the panel according to the uh, uh, sun's position okay so these methods normally are not used by uh, many of the solar uh, power plants because uh, this uh, uh, tracking needs mechanical actuators uh, uh, we all know these uh, plants are continuously exposed to environment uh, 24 hours uh, per day over the years okay if we are using uh, mechanical actuators uh, it will uh, uh, needs a uh, lot of maintenance so the cost will be very high even though if we extract uh, more power when compared to the normal uh, installation methods uh, maintenance and replacement cost is uh, somewhat higher <coughs> so in mechanical tracking uh, they just tilt the panel and uh, makes uh, sun's uh, inclined to the solar panel in all the time so you continuously track the sun's position uh, in order to extract maximum power that is also one uh, type of uh, maximum power extraction technique okay then we see uh, uh, the difference uh, uh, efficiency energy area requirement calculation uh, uh, efficiency we see uh, for uh, pv normally in the range of uh, 13 to uh, 20 percentage uh, how they calculate is uh, that is uh, we all know efficiency equation output power divided by input power here what is the uh, input power light so that light equivalent uh, electrical uh, uh, power is calculated with the help of uh, the pyranometer okay that uh, pyranometer uh, will uh, give you that detail uh, so for any uh, uh, panels you can uh, directly calculate the uh, uh, efficiency <coughs> area for that uh, you should know the area because uh, that pyranometer uh, will uh, uh, give you the values uh, in watts per meter square area okay so you should uh, know the area of your uh, panel if you know that you can easily calculate the efficiency of the panels okay output you will just uh, multiply uh, voltage and uh, power what you are getting uh, from the panel okay next uh, per day energy generation i told you earlier uh, plant load factor uh, normally in the range of 12 to 20 assume that 20 percentage the equation is plf <laughs> Into twenty four into pm. Um, that is, this is a maximum power of the panel. Assume uh, you are uh, having one kilowatt solar plant in your home. If you want to calculate uh, per day energy generation, you can use this equation and calculate. <coughs> put a PLF as uh, uh, put a PLF as. ஒன்பது 
point two, twenty four hours and uh, one kilowatt. It comes around four point eight kilowatt hour. That is uh, four thousand eight hundred watt hour. Uh, then uh, by this equation, you can uh, calculate the area required. Okay, for installing a uh, one kilowatt panel, how much area is required? Means you can uh, calculate with the help of uh, equation. Area required equal to Required power divided by efficiency into thousand watts per meter square. <coughs> so, uh, if you calculate, uh, if you know the efficiency, you can uh, calculate the area required also. Okay, with an example, we uh, see this in the upcoming slides. Yeah. Definitely, you should need uh, spacing also. Uh, without uh, spacing, you you couldn't uh, clean the panels properly. Otherwise, uh, that uh, leads to uh, more power loss. These are the uh, calculation <coughs> for uh, PV uh, uh, plant capacity. Okay, so uh, I will uh, share this slide. You can uh, see uh, these calculations. Okay, this all uh, in, uh, case study calculations. Uh, you just uh, Calculate uh, uh, with the help of uh, these equations. Okay, I wish to cover uh, that partial shedding. <coughs> uh, two technologies are there one is uh, on grid and another one is uh, off grid technology. Uh, whereas in on grid, uh, in uh, on grid technology, uh, the inverter is. Uh, Inverter functions on the uh, feedback value of uh, uh, grid voltage, current, and uh, phase angle. <coughs> if the uh, grid line uh, information is not available, uh, that inverter doesn't function. Okay. To operate uh, the inverter, uh, a grid line uh, should be alive. Uh, if uh, are facing uh, two day shutdown, uh, our uh, entire solar plant uh, will be in the shutdown mode. <coughs> we couldn't uh, uh, get the power from the uh, solar PV. Now that is the main drawback in uh, on-grid technology. Recently, many uh, uh, inverters are coming up uh, that will work both on uh, on-grid and uh, standalone. If there is any shutdown, means uh, you can uh, change the mode to standalone, and uh, you can uh, feed that power to uh, some other uh, standalone loads. Okay. <coughs> this is standalone. Uh, it needs uh, batteries. Uh, here, for inverter, uh, you uh, give the set value uh, as the output voltage, uh, output uh, uh, frequency. Uh, for example, 50 hertz and uh, 230 or 415 means uh, that uh, will be delivered constant. Whereas in uh, on grid, that needs uh, uh, grid grid information, grid voltage and grid frequency and uh, grid phase sequence. It depends on this value, inverter output will be decided. Here, uh, the cost of uh, battery is uh, not, uh, <coughs> not included, uh, so the uh, overall cost will be uh, lower for on grid. Whereas for uh, standalone, the cost is uh, somewhat higher because of uh, batteries and also maintenance cost. <laughs> for inverters, Many uh, inverters are there. One is uh, central inverter, swing inverter, and micro inverters. Micro inverters are uh, recent uh, uh, technology in that uh, uh, inverter is uh, uh, mounted on the back side of the panel itself. Instead of uh, getting uh, DC output from the panel, here you get uh, AC output. For a short distance uh, transmission, uh, AC is uh, preferred. So, in that aspect, in that aspect, uh, uh, power loss will be very less in the case of uh, micro inverters. Okay, this is a string inverter uh, uh, which uh, normally used for various uh, uh, strings of array. <coughs> okay, central uh, inverter. If there is any uh, failure in the central inverter, we couldn't uh, extract power. Whereas in string inverter, uh, that uh, probability is. Uh, uh, lesser. Uh, if only matter failure means another uh, two operates and uh, we could receive uh, some amount of power. 
uh, from the plant. <coughs> this is a blocking diode and uh, um, purpose of a blocking diode. In this picture, uh, you see blocking diode is uh, placed on the uh, uh, output terminal of the panels. Uh, two panels are connected. Uh, in that uh, series connection, one uh, diode is connected. Uh, this uh, two panels delivering power to battery. Uh, assume during uh, day time, uh, power from the panel uh, flows to the uh, battery. Okay, through diode. Uh, so, from panel to battery, if you see bypass diode, that, that is a black di blocking diode is uh, forward bias. Okay, whereas from battery to the panel, that uh, blocking diode is uh, in uh, reverse bias uh, condition. Okay, so the this panel, uh, what do is uh, uh, during uh, night time, power from the battery may uh, flow through this uh, uh, to this panel. Okay, if it happens, means the panel gets uh, damaged. Reverse current blocking diode is used here. So the purpose of using a uh, blocking diode is to uh, prevent the panels from reverse current. So without this diode, there is a chance to <coughs> there is chance for the power flow from battery to panels. So this diode protects the panel from reverse current. That is the purpose. Okay. Uh, partial shading. That is the uh, our uh, research area. Okay. Uh, see if you are uh, seeing uh, See, uh, these all uh, consider uh, this module. Okay. This module in nearly uh, 50 uh, cells can be uh, connected in series or parallel. See, these uh, cells are receiving uh, low irradiation due to the shadow. These portions are uh, receiving higher irradiation. So there is a mismatch in current generation due to uh, partial shading. Okay, what happened uh, means due to that this uh, mismatch uh, current, the entire uh, power generation uh, gets reduced. Let us see uh, how uh, it is uh, happening. Okay, here also for this panel you see these portions receiving lower, these portions receiving higher irradiation. Here also these portions receiving higher when compared to this portion. So this is called a mismatch effect, okay? Reduction of power due to partial shading is called a mismatch effect. That uh, partial shading can be uh, caused due to uh, uh, tree, other uh, kind of uh, shadows like building shadows, cloud, all those things, uh, even dust. That we normally uh, call it as uh, siling effect, okay? Uh, consistent, uh, uh, continuous, uh, uh, partial shading will lead to hot spot. Uh, sometimes uh, that hot spot can damage the panel also. So we should uh, uh, focus uh, seriously on the uh, partial shading. <coughs> this is a partial shading effect. Uh, uh, this picture. Assume uh, uh, you are uh, using uh, uh, 10 volt. That same panel capacity we can uh, take 10 volt. One ampere. You are using uh, all. Assume that all the panels are uh, the same rating. Okay. If shadow is not there, means what? What will the output? Assume that there is no shadow here. Okay. What will be the output? <coughs> Four panels are connected in series. So ultimately, your uh, output voltage uh, becomes. Here, voltage series, ultimately 40 volt. And ampere, 
one ampere that is the array output for non shading condition okay whereas if shadow occurs these three panels are generating one ampere and this panel is uh, generating only 0.5 ampere means what happen that is called mismatching effect okay so these cell uh, module 1 module 2 module 3 are generating one ampere due to shadow this module is generating uh, 0.5 ampere means uh, as per uh, circuit analysis the minimum current value will be the output of array automatically your array output current will become 0.5 okay array output current will become 0.5 so if you see uh, the power value see the power value so 40 volt 0.5 20 watts only 20 watts you you will extract see uh, the capacity this panel is generating the full capacity 10 watts this panel also 10 watts this panel also 10 watts 30 watts here 5 watts actual capacity is 35 watts but due to this shadow the entire power gets reduced to 20 watts so this is called mismatch loss so the capacity is 35 watts here the power generation is 20 watts the mismatch loss is 15 watts that mismatch loss the definition for mismatch loss is the loss cause due to the mismatch in current is called mismatch loss okay that is 15 watts for this case <laughs> here we didn't use any uh, other thing uh, other than uh, pv module <laughs> here we are using uh, bypass diode okay here you see we are using a uh, uh, one one diodes across the pv module okay here also for the same case you are going to calculate okay here you see uh, 0.5 okay but in this case what happened means the entire the current uh, uh, from the three modules get bypassed okay and flows through this diode and uh, reaches the output okay so this uh, panel gets bypassed due to the bypass diode the partial shadow partial shaded panel gets bypassed by the bypass diode if you calculate the voltage and current means the voltage for this array is 30 volt and current is 1 ampere the power is 30 watts for this case okay 30 watts here power gets generated whereas the capacity is uh, 35 already we calculated 35 so the mismatch loss is 5 watts whereas in the previous case it is 15 watts here it reduced to 5 watts because of using bypass diode so the purpose of bypass diode is used to uh, overcome the partial shading effect okay in order to extract the maximum power bypass diodes normally uh, 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 used across the uh, modules across the strings in the modules to overcome the partial sharing effect okay uh, this is the combination of uh, bypass and blocking diode in uh, pv array blocking diode to uh, prevent the reverse current flow bypass diode is used to enhance the power during partial shading that is the purpose okay factors affecting the performance is uh, temperature partial shading uh, dust formation and hot spot these are the uh, uh, main factors uh, you see uh, these uh, dust formation also uh, will create a mismatch in current generation because it affects the uh, amount of photons hitting the uh, pv cell okay uh, particles present on the uh, pv module get a uh, lattice obstacle okay in allowing uh, photons getting into the uh, pv cells 
okay i hope uh, you all understand okay uh, these are the works uh, which uh, we uh, um, published in uh, papers bypass diode and scanning algorithm here uh, we uh, scan the bypass diode states and uh, find the maximum power operating uh, point uh, very quickly compared to the pndo and inc okay uh, that uh, we published in uh, elsewhere journal and uh, uh, electrical configuration and uh, static reconfiguration uh, we can uh, see in the later uh, uh, lectures uh, there are two uh, reconfiguration techniques electrical is uh, reconfiguring the uh, uh, electrical connection of the panel is called electrical reconfiguration whereas static reconfiguration by maintaining the electrical uh, configuration same and uh, physically changing the location of the panels uh, in order to uh, disperse the shading <coughs> is called the static reconfiguration uh, you can uh, uh, we can uh, discuss later uh, in the upcoming lectures okay our uh, research related to pv we did uh, uh, electrical reconfiguration in uh, two kilowatt uh, solar power plant and uh, we published in uh, journal of poltronics and uh, we developed a um, couple matching uh, algorithm in order to reduce the mismatch uh, in, uh, losses okay uh, for example i wish to uh, <coughs> I used to uh, tell with a simple example here uh, what uh, this uh, switching matrix circuit is. Uh, the circuit can uh, connect any female part to any male part. Okay, so that is the purpose of uh, this uh, uh, switching matrix circuit. Assume uh, uh, the current generation uh, values uh, like this. Okay, here also unknown ampere. Here also unknown and uh, uh sorry uh, we can uh, here uh, we can uh, see point uh, 5 simple okay point 5 all are point 5 all are uh, here this also point 5 and this also point 5 here uh, one one assume that these all panels are generating uh, one one uh, ampere. Okay, here point five. So what will be the output for uh, this configuration? Four panels are connected in parallel in the upper row. Okay, these four panels are connected in parallel. In normal configuration, these four panels are connected in parallel. So ultimately, the current value is uh, 2 ampere. Is it right? Current value is 2 ampere. Okay. 2 ampere. Uh, okay. In the second row, what, what is the current value? Four panels are connected in parallel, but the current value is 1 ampere. So here, 4 ampere. Okay, in the third row, there are also four panels, four ampere, one on ampere each. So, four ampere. So, if uh, three sources uh, like this are connected in series, what happened? Already we saw. So, the current output will become two ampere. This is what happened if uh, the connections. Uh, uh, is our connections are done in the conventional methods okay whereas uh, in this uh, couple matching circuit this uh, switching mat matrix circuit will uh, recombine the uh, uh, male and female part okay let us assume that uh, uh, this uh, 0.5 and 0.5 is uh, connected with uh, uh, pv 2 and 3 these this female part 1 and uh, male part 2 is connected and male part uh, four and uh, uh, sorry, uh, male. This is male part one. This is male part one, two, three. This is female part one, two, three. So this female part is connected with uh, male two, and male part one is connected with uh, uh, female two. Means what about uh, the current value? 
what about the current value so here 0.5 0.5 1 and 1 so ultimately 3 ampere here you get a 3 ampere okay for next row become this uh, switching matrix circuit shift the row okay uh, this switching matrix circuits instead of uh, making a uh, female one and uh, male one as uh, row one it makes female part row one and uh, male part uh, row two as a first row that just uh, shift the rows okay that's why we uh, got uh, 3 ampere for first row 0.5 0.5 and uh, this one and this one ampere whereas in the second row it uh, just uh, shift this uh, male part row one this row one with female part row two okay the ultimately the current value becomes 3 0.5 0.51 this one and another one ampere so totally 3 ampere okay what about uh, it makes uh, these uh, male female 3 and uh, male 3 It connects these two rows same. Okay, this just shift the rows between uh, these two and these two. The fourth row, uh, the sorry, uh, the third row value now becomes four ampere. All four are four panels are uh, generating uh, the same current. So what about uh, the output here? The array output current becomes three ampere. Okay, for uh, normal case whereas it is 2 ampere for uh, this case this is 3 ampere we have uh, in enhance the power output by minimizing the mismatch loss happen due to the partial sharing effect this is what uh, we have uh, done in a uh, couple matching circuit here uh, we uh, try to match uh, the uh, healthier versus weaker how we mention healthier is the panel which is generating a uh, uh, high current is called healthier the panel which is generating low current is called weaker that is combined and uh, in order to uh, extract the uh, uh, maximum power from the array if you want to even uh, study uh, from our uh, literatures this uh, aged panel reconfiguration uh, this is also uh, done in our uh, plant and uh, uh, as a suggestion every plant should be inspected and uh, they should uh, reconfigure properly according uh, uh, to a periodical time interval at least for every year we should analyze the panel and we should uh, reconfigure otherwise uh, power loss will be there <coughs> this is bypass jet scanning algorithm uh, published in elsewhere this is the uh, pv and uh, still coupled hybrid method uh, this is also published in energy conversion management journal elsewhere here uh, we used uh, 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 pv as well as uh, uh, solar still in order to uh, improve the overall efficiency the water given to the uh, uh, solar cell is flown uh, through the uh, panel so the temperature of the panel uh, gets reduced in, uh, thereby uh, panel power in increases here we used a solar panel at the bottom of the still solar still the current injection method the mismatching current is injected with the help of buck converter in order to enhance the overall power this is published in solar energy uh, this is the work uh, which uh, i collaborated with uh, nit uh, professor s kumar avil and uh, this is the image process technique here uh, we uh, try to uh, uh, find the partial shading with the help of uh, normal tag camera and uh, this is the uh, thermal imaging uh, method to find the uh, uh, hot spot this is uh, published in iterb transaction and uh, we uh, developed a pv panels uh, with uh, two junction box for that we uh, filed a patent also Uh, these uh, modules uh, uh, pay way for uh, uh, 
repairing in uh, conventional uh, panels which is having one junction box we couldn't repair once it is damaged we have to uh, replace for us uh, in these kinds of panels we could uh, repair and uh, reuse it okay that is the difference so this uh, i wish to conclude uh, my session uh, uh, thanks for uh, uh, giving me this opportunity if any questions uh, i am happy to answer thank you sir for sharing your valuable thoughts on pv modules and also partial shading effect and also you have discussed different algorithms for achieving this maximum power tracking so thank you thanks a lot sir thank you ma'am any doubts from the participant if you are having any doubts you are free to ask you can unmute yourself and you can go ahead participants if you are having any doubts illa varana vena vena adu solla vendu doctor participants anyone is having any doubts Okay, so I think so. Everyone. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Fine, fine. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Partic dear participants, thank you for your participation. The feedback link has been shared in the chat box, so you can fill the. You are. You. You have to fill that feedback form, and after filling the feedback form, you can leave the session. Thank you. Thank you all.